All right, let's talk about coiling today. So some things that I'm going to need for coil building. Um, I like to use a board to work on. I need a plastic bag, maybe two. And I often like to use a banding wheel. You'll also need something to score with, either a scoring tool um, or a needle tool. And then you certainly need your hands and you might want to use a wooden modeling tool, especially if you happen to have long nails so you're unable to smooth with your fingertips. Um, and you need a plan. And of course you need clay. You get to choose what kind of clay body you have. So the first thing is to make, um, determine if you need a base. So for example, if you're making something functional, um, I'm pretty sure you're gonna need a base if it's gonna hold anything. And you need to think about what is the proportion of your base to say your widest part. Um, is there a widest part that's wider than your base or is it, you know, does it just curve in? If it gets wider, um, uh, like this one does up here, you need to think about the total width that you're going for and the proportion of this base here. So for this drawing, I would say it's probably about, you know, 50% size here to here. So for example, if this was, if I wanted it eight inches, then I would probably try for a four inch base. Because if I start with a really wide base by accident, and then I really still want this curve, I'm gonna find out myself with a really, really big belly pot that perhaps I wasn't planning for. The only other thing to keep in mind in terms of size for a base, um, especially if you're thinking about something abstract, is does it fit in the kiln? So we have a few sizes of kilns and the best kind of guideline is if you can keep something um, around 12 to 16 inches, you don't really wanna go over 16 inches, otherwise it becomes a little tricky to fit in the kiln. Um, so just keep that in mind. For this piece, if I was making an abstract piece, um, I could give it a base, but I might not need to, so perhaps I'm not gonna worry about a base. If I am making a base, I like to start with just a regular old slab. There's no reason to coil build a base if you don't, um, if you don't want to. So then what I need to do is have coils and my scoring tool. I like to pre-make my coils. All right, so you can see that I've done that here and I keep them all in a bag. And it's really important that if you do pre-make coils that you keep them wrapped up. So I would grab a coil. So I'll use this one. I'm gonna wrap these up. If I have holes in my bag, I wanna make sure that I don't leave, leave those parts open. Put that to the side. Now I'm ready to go. Um, in terms of size for coils, I really aim for about a finger thickness. A lot of times I see people want to make, make really tiny coils and um, then you don't really have enough clay to smooth things together and you end up with a really fragile piece. So even if you want something fairly delicate and thin, I wouldn't try to make a coil any thinner than say your finger, like just your pointer finger, um, because it just creates a lot of challenges, especially as you're starting out. So I need to score. Scoring is going to be extremely important for coil building because you're layering so many parts. If you don't score them together, um, I can guarantee the clay will remember and it's gonna probably pop off at one point and then your coil pieces in multiple pieces. So I'm scoring both parts and then I need to create or add some slip. So I could get a container of slip and just kind of smear it down the end here or around here. I really prefer to use a spray bottle. Just kind of spray it along here or some people will even grab a bowl of water and a paintbrush and just paint along. And then I'm gonna score again. So I've created slip just by scoring, adding water and scoring. And I don't have to do that for both. I just do it on one. And now I'm gonna start to add it onto my base. And when I'm adding my coils, I always kind of guide them into place and I push down a little bit with my finger. So as I'm putting this coil on, I'm just pressing down a little bit to make sure that I really got this, the scoring lines stuck together. So really pressing down, not enough that I'm flattening my whole coil, but just getting it to grab onto it, it itself. Now here I have a little extra end and I have two choices. If I'm going for a really exact kind of rounded volume, I'm probably going to want to cut this off at the joint so that it ends pretty level, right? If I'm going for something maybe a little more uneven or um, I'm just going to patch it up later, I might just keep going and have it kind of jump up to the next level. Now at this point, you could smooth it right away. I will often smooth my first layer just by smoothing up around the base because oftentimes I find that my base has a little extra ledge and I can do that. 
But once I get going and have, say, this first coil on, I actually will coil a few levels and then smooth, all right? It is important that you smooth as, or blend as you go. Um, I might not smooth any more than this right away, but I do need to make sure that I'm paying attention to how dry my piece is and I'm smoothing before it gets too dry um, to, and I run out of options. Um, if you wanna smooth both the inside and the outside, don't forget to do that um, about at the same time. Um, as I'm smoothing and blending things together, I wanna make sure that I support the clay. So I don't wanna just push like something like this because you can see how it's pushing the clay out, right? And now I'm gonna really distort my shape. So instead I want to support, right, uh, with my opposite hand, or I will often do it just with my um, fingers and thumb. I prefer to smooth downward, partly just because that's like a natural action for your thumb, right? I also find that that just helps, um, you know, I'm pushing the clay down into itself, right? And this is uh, where I might wanna switch over to a banding wheel. So I might wanna take my board. Um, for something this small, I might not actually need a board. If I was making something larger and more random like this, especially if it didn't have a base, I'd want a board so that it had some stability so that if I had to, at the end of class, move it somewhere, um, it wasn't like flopping around on me. I could just pick up the whole board. If you use a board, it's extremely important that you don't put your piece directly on it because this wood will dry your piece out even if you wrap the whole thing in plastic. Instead, I wanna put my plastic down first, then put my piece down. And during class, I'm gonna leave it all on here. I'm just gonna open my plastic up and go from there. So now, if I put it on top of my banding wheel, which are located in the corner um, cabinet above the sink. Now, as I'm smoothing, I can I can move it as I go. Um, we don't have enough banding wheels for every single person to keep in their cubby between classes, so please make sure at the end of class that you take your board and plastic off and that your banding wheel gets wiped down if it needs to be and put away. So from here, I'm gonna keep scoring and adding clay. So here's one that I've been working on and it's gotten a little bit um, taller and you can see that I've smoothed it to some degree, right? If I wanted a really smooth surface, probably in a few layers, I need to go back and smooth it a little bit more. But let's talk about curving something. So if I want, remember you need to have at least one change of direction curving in or out. So if I want something to say curve out, it's all about how you stack your coil. So if you think about your fingers as coils, if you want something straight, right, you've stacked your fingers straight on top of each other. If you want something curved, then you're just curving your fingers or your coils, curving one direction or the other, right? Curving a piece is um, gradual, so don't expect to get a, an obvious curve right away. So what I'm gonna do is instead of stacking directly on top, I'm gonna put it just slightly on the outside. I'm not going all the way on the outside, I'm just kind of on the edge. And in a case like this where I have some extra space, um, I often will end up with some little scraps because I've been cutting as I go, right? Um, so I usually will hang on to these and keep them in my bag of coils, at least for a block. So then I can add this guy on and trim as needed. So I will often kind of compress and shape as I'm blending. So instead of blending straight down, I might use both hands and I kind of squish the clay towards itself like this as I'm blending. And what that does is it helps keep it really compressed together and not just like folding open as I'm sort of stretching it and shaping it. And if I don't happen to do that maybe the first time I blend, I might blend the whole thing together and then I'll come back around and I'll go back around and just kind of give it a once over to make sure that it's where I need it to be in terms of um, the shape. And of course, checking it from the sides and everything like that and from multiple angles. I prefer to layer a few coils and then blend. So I actually don't, you know, do one coil blend, do one coil blend. I might build maybe three or four layers up and then blend them all down and then another three or four layers up and then blend them all down. And then of course, when I'm done, I'm gonna wrap it all up just like I would wrap everything else 
um, and go from there.